So today I'm in Los Angeles, which is the content creator's dream. So much being filmed, so much to photograph, bougie coffee houses, avocado on toast galore. This is an Instagrammer's dream. And so today I want to answer a particular question that's been on my mind for a long time, which is what's the best camera to use for Instagram? So today the main point I want to focus on is budgets. I'm going to look at a sub thousand dollar camera and a four thousand dollar camera and see which is best for Instagram. For the cheaper option, I've got the Fujifilm X-T1. This is my first Fujifilm camera. You can now get this body for around three hundred dollars and the lens is about the same. Now I use the Fujifilm X-H1 with battery grip and the 8 to 16 mm lens. This is about a four thousand dollar kit. So the question is, if I take the same photo with the exact same settings in the exact same place, post it on Instagram, will anyone be able to tell the difference? So some of you might have noticed I'm in the beautiful Beverly Hills part of Los Angeles. This is my first time in LA and it is really, really nice. I've been to all four corners of the city really so far and obviously it's very, very different. But for this test, I want to get a really iconic Los Angeles shot, but also a shot that is a good comparison that will compare sensors, lenses, all the quality elements that you'd expect from such differently priced cameras. And a key point I should say is yes, these are very differently priced cameras, Obviously the X-T1 was a lot more expensive when it did come out, but the point I'm trying to make is there are so many great cameras out there, you don't have to buy a brand new one. And if you're just doing Instagram, you can get away with a solid stills camera without fancy features like Bluetooth, GPS and all the other stuff. Just get some good shots. So for a classic LA shot, I think I've figured out what I want. I'm thinking about palm trees, going down a street, looking at sunset. And this would be a really good test for the cameras because at sunset you've got incredible dynamic range, you've got colour gradients, and then with the palm trees you've got finer details and shadows to play with as well. So there's elements that mean cameras have to work hard and we'll really get a good comparison between the two. So I found this street which is just off of Sunset Boulevard. It's perfect with these tall trees, it's the picture perfect it's a postcard LA shot. It's exactly what I wanted. As you might be able to hear there's a few problems. One is that it's a major road which it means I can't get in the middle to get that nice shot down the line with palm trees either side. And the second problem is it faces north, so there isn't going to be a sunset this way at all. So I need to think of something else. So I did a bit of googling and I think I found a solution. There were tons of options because I just searched Palm Tree Street LA. A lot of them were talking about Sunset Boulevard again, but that's such a major street and it's so long. I don't know where specifically they're talking about. So I'm not even going to try there. I found one option that looks like a really quiet, small street, which is perfect because it means the palm trees are actually even closer together. The West 5th Street, so that west means we'll be pointing at the sunset if we get one. The clouds are forming quite high right now, so we could be in for a really good show. Just have to get there and hope for the best. So I made it to the street and it was perfect. The clouds caught that sunset light and the whole sky started to glow. I got my shots and marked up exactly the same spot so I could get the same angle with the same cameras on the same settings. And then I got back to where I was staying. I opened up the files and they were quite different. I edited them to be as I'd like. That left me with two images that looked near identical. And then I posted them onto Instagram asking, not if anyone thinks one is better, because then they'll look for something. I asked them very specifically, can you see a difference? If so, do you prefer one or not? So I'm not saying one's better than the other. I didn't say one's more expensive than the other, one's a better kit than the other. I just said, is there a difference? It had to be as fair as possible. So I didn't want anyone looking, prying, just an open question. Okay, let's play it here as well. If you are watching this video and you didn't see the person on Instagram, I'm going to show you the photos now, pause the video after you've seen them, and write in the comments which you prefer, so you can play along with the reveal that's going to come. Which photo was better? Now let's check the results. Okay, so I had a healthy amount of comments. I mean, we've got, I prefer the first. Next person says, are they the same? First one. Second, can't tell the difference. Second one, can't tell the difference. First one, first one. Can't tell the difference, second one, can't tell the difference, second one, first one, second one, second one, first one, second one. 
thank you to all those who took part. It was really fun and frustrating that I couldn't tell you what it was for because I wanted the test to be as fair as possible. But number one was on the XH1 with the 8 to 16 mils. That's the $4,000 photo, as opposed to the second one, which many people said they preferred, which was the XT1. And what's particularly funny is a lot of people just straight up said, yeah, we can't tell the difference. So what's the point? What have we learned? Why did I do this test? I didn't tell you which camera is best for Instagram. What I'm trying to tell you is that it doesn't matter. When you reduce the files to this size, when you're making them Instagram sized, people can't tell the difference. So why do I spend so much money on cameras? Well, to me, I have professional needs, and so those advanced features are useful. But when you're looking at Instagram, when you're looking at small resolution images, you could be using a professional camera from 10 years ago and people won't know that it cost you $100. Photography is more accessible than you think. You don't need thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Yes, cameras with more advanced features can be helpful and they can make taking better pictures easier, but you can get the same results from a low end and high end. If you know what you're doing, if you're in the right place at the right time, the photos are less than HD on Instagram. They are tiny. When you reduce anything to that size, you can't tell a difference. The most important thing for photographers, whether you're just doing Instagram or you're doing massive poster prints, the point is you need a camera you feel confident with, a camera you are happy to use. Whether that's your phone, a $400 camera from six years ago, or a $6,000 camera that came out yesterday, it doesn't matter. You have to feel confident using it. And for beginners, you have to enjoy using it so that you're gonna bring it with you. Because adding a camera to your kit, if you're used to taking pictures on your phone, it's quite an addition to be lumbering around with that everywhere you go and to take the time to take it out and use it whenever you want to take a photo. If you're used to phones, that's a big leap. So get a camera that you enjoy using. So go to shops, feel them. Our videos can be useful if you want to know about value for money for specs because it's the professional opinions and guidance. But when it comes to actually knowing if you will use the camera, go to a shop. Try it out, feel it in your hand. I feel like then something more poignant, something arty. Arty, I could say about money and life. I could be quite deep right now, but it's just not coming to me. So I'm sorry for the clickbait title, but I knew it was the only way to get this message across. Thank you so much for watching. And I think I know what I want to finish this off with. There is a famous quote that goes around quite often, which is the best camera is the best camera no that the best camera is the one you have with you i want to change that i want to make an addition because that's too passive i want to say the best camera is the one you take with you it's your choice it's not what you stumble upon oh i happen to have my phone it's if you have a red cinema camera or a little fine pics camera if you don't take it with you why have it you could have the best camera in the world but you're going to leave it at home because it's too inconvenient to carry with you Get a camera that you love to use, which is what I've done. I'm so happy with it. It's taken a while to get here, but I can say I have the best cameras in the world because they are the best cameras for me. That is very unique. How many consumers can say that about the products that they buy, that they know they have the best ones? Because it's not by numbers. It's by usage and specs and what it does for me. And that is the best camera. So it's the ones I'm willing to take with me. Yeah, they're a bit bigger than maybe I'd hope but they do everything I could possibly want. So it's worth it. So if you have any camera related questions, you want to nerd out about lenses, cameras, fire them away in the comment section below. I will reply to as many as I can. Although when I say that, it sounds like there's going to be lots. There haven't been in the last few videos, so yeah, I'll reply. <laughs> For videos coming up, we've got Vancouver, we've got Hawaii, we've got Scotland again, we went back. What else? Maybe something from Greece, maybe something from Slovenia, we'll see. Maybe something from Oman, unlikely, but we'll see. So I did a bit of Googling, so I've done a bit of Googling, so I did a bit of Googling, so I've done a bit of Googling. You can get away with just photos, you don't need all the fascinating gizmos. So hopefully it'll be a good, good, good. We've got some high clouds forming right now, so hopefully it'll be a good, good yeah. This is north, so there's absolutely no sunset view. I wonder if they're honking to ruin the shot. Probably. I should, I should script things, I should plan what I'm saying. 
because this is clunky. 